Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody feeling good? Yeah. Anybody got bugs in your teeth from riding in this morning? <laughs> I had plenty of bugs on the bike. I had to clean some of them off before I rode up to church today. But good to see so many motorcycles out there today. Good to see this beautiful weather. Amen. Good to see so many beautiful faces out here today. Amen. All right, let's do let's do one of those turn to your neighbor moments. Y'all okay with that? Turn to your neighbor and say you're beautiful today. Look, and then and then look at the kids. Look at the kids that are over there saying, I am not saying that. I am not saying that. You know, that's the reality of it. We are God's creation, and God's never done anything wrong. Amen? And he loves each and every one of us. He loves us exactly as we are. Ernest is about there going, even me? Yes, Ernest, even you. We, we love Ernest the most. That's the reason we pick on him so much. But guys, welcome to the Rock Worship Center. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Uh, just a reminder, if this is your first time being here today, please stop and see us on the way out at the table right out front. Uh, somebody, who's going to be out there today at the end of service? Either my wife or Jillian, somebody be out there. We do have a gift for you today. We'd like to make sure you take that gift home with you today. So stop by and see us. Um, guys, we just we appreciate you so much. Folks that are joining us online as well, thank you for being part of our church community. Amen. And a funny little story, I was just sharing this with the guys back here. Um, Brenda and I had a funny, not funny, but a good encounter this past Thursday. We went out and had breakfast, which is not something we do. But we went out and had breakfast, and the waitress came over and said, I was trying to remember who y'all were. I've been watching your church services on the, online. And she said, I was just watching y'all last night. That's a good thing. But how many of y'all know my wife's got jokes? <laughs> my wife started laughing. The waitress went by. She said, ha, ha, you're going to have to start acting right all the time now. People, people are starting to realize who you are. So, so uh, you two up front, don't y'all be trying to get me in trouble out in public, okay? So, but again, welcome everybody. We do have a few announcements. Let me go ahead and do my announcements first. Um, tomorrow night, we do have the Light of God Motorcycle Ministry Bible Study. Um, it's open to anybody and everybody. We'd love for you to come out, whether you're on a motorcycle or not. And right now, we're calling it a thunderstorm, so probably not a lot of motorcycles tomorrow night. But you can still ride your bike. That's at 7 o'clock. We'd love to have you here for that. Um, also, as summertime is getting nearer and the weather's getting nice and got more and more people riding motorcycles, people like to go ride after church and before church and so forth. Um, if there's anybody here interested in just trying to lead some rides after church or got some ideas, James and Scott and Todd have been talking with these guys, or just a pickup ride during the week, feel free to just reach out and throw something online to find out who wants to go out and ride. Um, it's important that we fellowship together. And... We're going to ride motorcycles anyway. We might as well connect and fellowship together. And I think that's a great way to do it. Um, today, we do have a few folks hooking up. We're going to go ride to uh, Midland, down to Hot Mess Burgers, Midland. Midland, is it? Midland. Okay, going to Midland. Going to Midland, and we're going to go to Hot Mess Burgers right after, right after church today. So if anybody wants to ride, you're welcome to ride with us. We... That's not just motorcycles we do. It actually got started with people in cars, and I kind of volunteered myself and some other guys in the motorcycles to go join in. So, so if anybody wants to join right after church, we're going to be going for that. And one other thing, I just want to throw this out there. We were trying to schedule some kind of a meeting for volunteers, but it's just so busy right now. We do have some volunteer positions open right now. It, again, church is growing. we got new faces coming in all the time. Uh, I'm that type of person. I've never wanted to just go sit down. I always want to be part of something. Sunday mornings, especially uh, first time greeting guests in the parking lot. We've got some people who do a great job of that already, but we need some, some backups and some additions on that. If you're interested in serving in that area, kind of greeting people and old, old term usher, um, we've got some abilities for open uh, positions for that. But also our media team, these guys do a great job. Todd and Art about their week in, week out. But every now and then they want to go somewhere. If somebody's interested in learning to do some of that, please let us know. Um, Chip stepped in back here. Nathan's helping. Nathan's not here today. But they've just done an outstanding job helping out with the video back there. And um, But again, Chip, um, we're not sure if we're going to let him have any Sundays off. But he might want a Sunday off every now and then. So if there's anybody that's interested in learning how to do that, please let me know. We'd love to connect you back here. Okay? And it's time for me to let my wife have her time to come and share some 
fun stuff with you? Oh, I only got two lines to say. <laughs> You're cutting me. I'm feeling something right here now. <laughs> no, um, just all um, kidding around. Uh, we did have a great day yesterday with our kids, and so I'm thankful for everybody who came out. I'm not sure which was the best, the face painting or the bubbles, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they were all gathered around them bubbles, and we had to keep filling it up. <laughs> so, but now they did have fun with the sack races too. So, I'm, I think they had fun with our swing set too. We finally got to use it, like fully use it. So, uh, we were very thankful for that. <laughs> but um, again, thanks again to our volunteers who helped with that. Um, it was it was just exciting. Um, you know, we haven't been able to really come together as a group in a while, you know, as far as at the church. So, you know, we're thankful to be able to start doing some things again. So, um, when is Bible study? It is just phenomenal. Um, I just want to say thanks to the ladies that are coming and are being open and sharing. Um, you know, we're kind of networking together, realizing that we're not alone. Amen. Um, also, just a reminder, we do have a few prayer cloths left. If you would like one, um, feel free to come up and, you know, just get that during service today. Um, we are all about standing in the gap for our people, and um, we invite you to come and be a part of that as well. Uh, just a reminder, uh, we have a new month that just began, so we have some birthdays and anniversaries. So if you have a May birthday or an anniversary, please stand. We'd like to recognize you. Yes, the title is just 
it's a simple math for those that grew up from kindergarten all the way up, 10%, right? So just whatever you make, 10% you give to God. Offerings are what we call the extra money. That's what you give to extra. You know, if you have more over your time, you give extra, and that goes into extra events. You know, it gives them to the missions and different things, too. So that's what it's all about. Isn't good God? We have an awesome God, no we? But he wants to be cheerful givers, right? So if you're like, oh, oh I don't know if I want to give this today. Well, maybe put a smile while you're giving it, amen? <laughs> Let's all stand as we pray and just enjoy giving to the kingdom of God. He has for in store for you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time together. That we can give cheerfully, Lord, because cheerful givers. But Lord, also we just know that it's a great thing. Because your kingdom grows from that. Lives are changed. Souls are saved. The media is stretched out throughout the world. We, we can have access to electronic equipment and uh, having our pastor on salary just to bless our people and bless these activities we have. We just thank you, Father God, that just the great and mighty things are happening to the kingdom of God and the church. The church is going to grow and it's going to grow mightily. But we do ask the Lord to bless them people today that are just trying to stretch today and say, you know, God, I'm going to do that. I'm going to give a little bit extra today. And may you just bless them back mightily. Let them see you, God, as a true friend, a true God that just loves on them and just wants to bless them. We we'll praise you, Lord, for a great day. May you be glorified in all things. Amen. Come forward, bring your offering, and also come forward, I'll hand out the uh, elements for the uh, communion. an awesome time as we go into our communion. And the meaning behind communion, of course, is God sat around the guys, the disciples, and said, this is going to be a time to remember me. I'm like, what? Remember me? You're with us here, Lord. And he says, no, I'm going to give my body. I'm going to give it all to you. And also, I'm going to give my blood. I'm just going to sacrifice. And what's cool about the communion, too, it's a connection. It's a covenant that we're bringing with God. It's like, God, thank you for being an awesome God. Thank you for what you did for me. Thank you. And that's why we have to rejoice during communion time. Because it's like, oh man, you are awesome, God. You're giving your body, you're giving, you're giving your life, your everything to me. Wow. See, and that's why we have to enjoy communion. We have to make it a happy event, right? Just like giving our time is happy. So is communion, right? And as we give him the bread, you know, taking the bread, it's a representative of his body. But here's what's cool about it. His body is a blessing because he gave it all. And so what you're saying is, God, I give it all back to you, right? And the blood, you gave my life. I want to give my life to you, God. And that's the cool thing about communion. So before we open up the elements, we're going to have Pastor Ron just bless the communion today, and then we'll go ahead. And when we do open them, basically when we are finished, we'll have the ushers come down the aisle, and they will just give you know, a pass the plate, we call it, or a basket to put all your elements back into that. So let's all stand as you have Pastor Ron bless today's communion. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, 
It's such a privilege that we can come today, Lord, not only to your house, but to worship you in freedom, in truth, Lord God. But we thank you for giving your Son, your only begotten Son, to die upon the cross of Calvary for our sins, to bear the stripes for our healing, Lord. God, to shed his body in his blood. God, I pray over these elements that we're going to take today, Lord, this wafer and this juice. God, and according to your word, Lord God, we do this in remembrance of you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So those just uh, take the first tab off, and that little bread be released. It's the first plastic part. And that's the bread. All together, this do in remembrance of you. Just a moment to collect this, and we're going to get into some worship time. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Guys, it's great. We get to come together and be one with Jesus in church today. Amen? Amen. We get to come together in fellowship and celebration. We were having a um, discussion out there about riding motorcycles just a little while ago. I was joking around. Somebody said, yeah, sometimes you just want to go get lost. I said, well, actually, I don't like getting lost. I said, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> but um, again, I know we've got at least a couple of people here the first time at the Rock Worship Center today. We encourage you to be part of worship around here. Have fun. Sing along. Raise your hands. Clap. <laughs> Sometimes it even sounds like a little bit of old rock and roll in here. Amen. I'm just watching there. Just about finished up with these over here. We might need to get Ernest singing today. Thank you, Ernest. <coughs> he is, I know. <laughs> Guys, let's have a little bit of fun and let's worship the Lord today.
Good God on 
controversy because sometimes we run into some controversial things like my monitor buzzing over here is aggravating me so I had to do something about that but controversy how many people know that there's controversial things about the Bible there's controversial things about Jesus there's controversial things you can find controversy in anything you're really wanting to find controversy about can't you it's, it's not too hard. I mean, you start looking at the, the Christian world, how divided it is, and even within denominations, you've got division. And we've talked about this a lot. Um, speaking on unity is something that I'm passionate about, that we need to become that unified church. But we're not talking about 2021. We're talking about controversy that has been around for a long time. And I, and I wanted us to... Be able to share in communion today. This is something prior to COVID. We were set up doing on the first Sunday of every month. And uh, we're hoping to proceed with that. But I want to read to you a little bit today about something that was very controversial in Jesus' days. And it's something that we kind of touched on already without even preaching. But John chapter 6. We're going to be in here for just a few minutes. John chapter 6 verses 41 through 42. I'm going to skip around. I hope you'll go back and read all of this a little later. I'm just going to hit a few key verses on this. 
John chapter 6, verses 41 through 42, the Jews then complained about him because he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph? whose father and mother we know, how is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? So obviously we know in the Jewish faith that there were people that stood against Jesus because they did not receive him as the Messiah, as the Savior. We're still dealing with that today. Do you know we still have a job today to win this world to Jesus? And a lot of that is we've got to, we've got to go and show people through the truth of God's word exactly who Jesus is. Amen. Everybody here have a Bible? Anybody, you know, don't not necessarily have it with you today, phone, app. I've got them all pulled up here today. But I hope you have your Bible. And you're going to hear me say this so many times that you'll get blue in the face from me saying, I believe in the whole Word of God. I believe in the Bible. I believe this is the inspired God Word, the Word of God. God breathed this. And it, yes, maybe it was transcribed by the hands of men, but I believe it. Do you believe that the Word of God is true? And like, you know, I'll challenge this occasionally because if you don't believe that the Word of God is true, we need to have some off-site teachings. We need to have some Bible classes and show you who this is. But the Jews were contesting Jesus because he came and said, I'm the bread of life. And they said, how can this be? And again, these were traditional Jews. They, they did not like the fact that Jesus was introducing a new concept. How many people know tradition doesn't like anything to change? You, you take a, tra a tradition and you come and you try to change that tradition, oh, you're going to have some opposition right away. It's going to be some controversy. So Jesus was bringing something new to the table. Jesus brought a lot of new stuff to the table. We're going to be talking more about that this month. But Jesus was bringing in this new concept. The traditional Jews didn't like it. It's like, they're like, we like our religion just the way it is. Do you like your religion? If you like your religion, you won't like me very much. Because I'm all about busting up some religious thoughts. I'm all about busting up religious mindsets and setting you free to the truth of God's word. Amen. And, and there's not everybody likes me because of that. But religion is just doing something the way you've been taught to do it because that's what somebody said to do. It. Amen. If y'all remember two years ago, I did, I don't even know, three, four months a preaching in here asking you, why do you believe what you believe? Is it because somebody told you what to believe? Or is it because of what you've read and experienced yourself? And I'm going to re-challenge you on that. But these Jews, again, we like our religion just the way it is. And we don't need you messing it up. I could be, I'm preaching to the church of 2021 today. I'm not preaching to the Jews of 2,000 years ago. So Jesus, rather than backing down, what did he do? He just he took it a little bit farther. That's the thing I loved about Jesus. Jesus didn't just stop. He he pushed, the, he pushed the point a little bit. Well, let's jump on down to verses 53 through 54. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last days. Amen. Again, here's Jesus introducing a new concept. If you're taking notes today, I hope you'd write this down. Because the new concept that Jesus was introducing was relationship over religion. He was, he was introducing something brand new to these traditional Jews. And it was relationship over religion. And the other part of that was spirit led over flesh lived. Okay? Because the Jewish faith taught you that everything you did was works of the flesh. And you had to earn your way to get into heaven. And now Jesus is coming in saying, all you have to do is partake of me. All you have to do is be one with me. All you have to do is accept me. My grace and my mercy is a gift to you. And I will present you a way into heaven. But again, Jesus had to come in and fight tradition. And they didn't like anything new. John chapter 6 verse 60. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is hard. This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? You read your Bible? If you read this Bible, some of this is hard. If you read God's Word, some of us, some of us a little bit hard to, to grasp. Some of us a little bit hard to understand. Some of us a little bit hard to maybe even accept. If you are thinking through the natural, if you are operating through a, a, a flesh-lived life instead of a spirit-led life, amen? 
If you're trying to base everything on religion, a systematic way of doing things instead of a relationship with Jesus Christ, some of this can be kind of hard. And here's Jesus' own disciples. When they heard this talking about, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, they're like, whoa, wait a minute, this is something new. This is, this is some crazy stuff happening here. And I want to tell you what's, what's happening here is John chapter 6, verse 66. And this is something that's always interested me because that's John 6, 6, 6. We'll start looking at that. It says, from that time, many of his disciples. Now, we're not talking about the, everybody. We're talking about the people that were following Jesus, the disciples. When he's introducing this new concept of, of taking of his flesh and drinking of his blood and that eternal life, it can only be found through that communion with him. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. He said, I've had enough of this. This is getting this, this is getting this is getting weird. This is getting a little bit weird. I don't think I want any more of this. You know, I'm, I'm opening my Bible and I read this thing about some Old Testament prophet that made an axe head float up out of the water. That's too weird for me. I, I looked at somebody that caught down fire from heaven and came down and consumed an altar. That's a little bit too weird for me. I saw somebody, I, I saw in the Bible in the New Testament where Jesus went and raised the dead and he healed the sick and he gave sight to the blind. And it wasn't just Jesus, but it was his followers after. That's just a little bit too weird for me. You know why? Because it's busting up tradition. It's busting up religion. And it's getting into this what is available through Jesus Christ. This power that comes through Jesus Christ. Because of this controversy, many people, many of his followers walked away because, of, because his teachings were uncomfortable. Y'all just want to be comfortable? Yeah. That's all you want to be is comfortable, or do you want to be effective? <laughs> I mean, not be real. I, I appreciate people being real. If you want you if you want to be comfortable, you can be comfortable. If you want to be effective for the kingdom of God, you need to pay attention to what I'm preaching about today. Because it's not about being comfortable. Picking up your cross and following Jesus, there's nothing comfortable about that. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. There's, there's nothing comfortable about that. And we need to get through that mindset. We can live a blessed life. We can still live in air-conditioned homes and drive nice cars and come to a beautiful church and have praise and worship and fellowship events and all this stuff, fun stuff. That's all part of the promise that Jesus has given us also. But what we're looking at here, because Jesus' teachings were uncomfortable and his teachings were unpopular... I, I, I might become on the unpopular side from time to time. We actually see the first church split over doctrine even before the church was developed. Y'all see this? Jesus is trying to establish a church. He's got followers and all of a sudden he says, well, look, here's the way it's going to be. We don't like that. We don't like, we don't like that part of the Bible. We, we like Psalms. I don't, I don't like that part of the Bible. So we see this first church split. They said, we're just not going to do this. But yet still today, and I hope you can receive this, Jesus is still causing controversy with people who, and people are walking away from him and his word on a daily basis. Choosing popular, comfortable religion over being the powerful, effective church that he designed. I wish I had a slide for that, but I didn't. This, this, some of this was fresh man I just brought in this morning. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to repeat that. People are still walking away because they're choosing popular, comfortable religion over being the powerful, effective church that he designed. Guys, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm ready to see a transformation in the church. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to see the church become the powerful entity that Jesus designed it to be. I, I'm ready to see the manifestation. I'm ready to see the things of God taking place in this world. I'm ready to see the day and time when, when Christianity is just moving rapidly across this world and Islam is stepping to the side and, and we're seeing people converted from Islam to Christianity and we're seeing people converted from Hinduism and Buddhism to Christianity and we're seeing souls saved and we're seeing lives changed and we're seeing the kingdom established here. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And let me tell you, that's, go ahead. But that's not going to happen with a comfortable religious church. Okay? It's only going to happen from an effective and a powerful church. And that's only going to come through what Jesus wanted us to have. Amen. Amen. The controversy that I'm talking about is the Holy Spirit. The controversy I'm talking about today is the Holy Ghost. Jesus lost up several hundred, possibly thousands of followers because of the, he was introducing the concept of communion 
with that before the Lord's Supper was initiated, he was trying to get people to understand, you got to take all of me. I, I love the way Pastor Mark presented communion today. Jesus said, I want you to take all of me, and I want all of you. And see, for me, I want all of his word. I want all of this word. I don't want parts of it. I don't want somebody dissecting my Bible and taking parts out of it and saying, we ain't teaching that part because it's uncomfortable. I don't like people taking this out and saying, this is a little bit hard to understand. I, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I might not be popular. I'd rather be effective. Amen. I'd rather see a strong church of a few than a weak church of thousands. Amen. And this is all a shift of the Holy Spirit because this is supposed to be a happy little message. I was just going to smile. <laughs> it is a happy message. I feel like I'm done preaching. I just need to go eat a cheeseburger now. But, let's see. <laughs> but see, this goes way back. Now listen, see, y'all in here talking about that country music. I used this term the other day. There's a stupid country music song. And every time I hear way back, I think we go way back like Cadillac seats. And if whoever wrote that stuff, they need to get rid of that in my mind. But we're talking about more than 2,000 years ago. We're talking about Old Testament prophecy and talking about Jesus. But the prophecies that talked about Jesus, we also had prophecies talking about the Holy Spirit. And what I want to talk to you today is about the Holy Spirit. Not what I have to say about the Holy Spirit, but about what the Bible has to say about the Holy Spirit. What Jesus has to say about the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit is supposed to do for the church. And what the Holy Spirit is supposed to be doing through the church in 2021 and moving forward. Amen. I ain't backing up. I'm moving forward. Okay. We want to talk about the things we're going to do. Not the things that we weren't able to do in the past, but the things that we're going to do moving forward. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you guys, I'm ready to see this city transformed. I'm tired of hearing about gangs. I'm tired of hearing about drug cartels. I'm tired of hearing about shootings every day. I'm tired of hearing about rape and murder and all this stuff. I'm ready to see the kingdom of God expand through this community. And then it just blow out from here. But if we don't start some, doing something different here, the same thing's going to keep happening out there. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. Holy Spirit, Old Testament prophecy, Joel, prophecy, Joel chapter 2, verses 28 29. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men's service and my maid service. I will pour out my spirit in those days. And we get into the book of Acts, chapter 2, and we see that initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we, Brenda, we were talking about birthdays a little while ago. Brenda said, you know, who's got a birthday coming up this month? You know, the church has a birthday on the 23rd of this month. We need to celebrate the birthday of the church. That's Pentecost Sunday. Amen. I think we need to have balloons and cupcakes and all that other good stuff. Amen. So we're going to celebrate a birthday. It's the church's birthday. Can this be the birthday that the church becomes everything that it's supposed to be? The book of Acts, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost Sunday, the day that the New Testament church was born. And what I want to point out about this is, like I said, what Jesus had to say. What Jesus had to say, who is the Holy Spirit? Y'all remember who's on third? How many people remember that? You know, we talked about that, you know. God the Father, God the Son, and who's on third? God the Holy Spirit. The third person of the triune Godhead. The one that lives within us right now. Amen. Amen. John chapter 16. Verses 5 through 15. Let's go there. This is. Mark this in your Bible. Go by, This is important stuff. Because this is what Jesus is telling us. Who the Holy Spirit is. Jesus said. But now I go away to him. Who sent me. And none of you ask me. Where are you going. But because I have said these things to you. Sorrow has filled your heart. So obviously, these people that have been walking with Jesus for this three-year period of his ministry, grown to love Jesus and seen the power, seen the miracles, seen the workings of Jesus, and have been there with him hand in hand. And now Jesus says, guys, i got to let you know, my time is coming to an end. Before, before very long, I'm going to be leaving this world. I'm going to be spending the rest of my eternity with my Father in heaven. Amen. But I go to prepare a place for you. That's, but he said, but yeah, I know y'all are sad now because I'm leaving. You're sad now because I'm leaving. Verse 7, he said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. All right, I, I, I throw this out often. How many people here want to call Jesus a liar? Go ahead and raise your hand. Anybody at home? <laughs> Shoot me a private message. If you say, yep, Jesus is a liar, let's talk about it. 
But Jesus said, he said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper. Y'all see that capital H on helper? The helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come to you, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I love this line, if you, and if you can embrace this to hear how big this is. Because on Jesus, and we'll come back to it, give me a moment. When Jesus said on the cross, he said, it is finished. It was finished. Jesus did everything he needed to do on this earth, amen? But verse 12, here's Jesus, I still... I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. So there were things that still needed to be taught to those apostles, those disciples of that day, but also to us today. He said, I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you of the things to come. He will glorify me, or he will take up what is mine and declare it to you. All the things of the Father are mine. Therefore I said that he will take, therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. That's a lot of information in those few verses. But this is Jesus defining who the Holy Spirit is in our life. Number one, Jesus said the Holy Spirit brings conviction of sin. Who was, who was here Wednesday night? We had a pretty good group Wednesday night. We had a little fun. This is kind of tying in a little bit with Wednesday night's teaching of um, the facts of life. Talking about, what was her name? I forgot her name now. Mrs. Garrett. Mrs. Garrett. Yeah, Mrs. Garrett, the house mother. How she was almost like a, a representative of the Holy Spirit in that. And showed how Jesus is our helper. And so we started looking. And we talked about some of this on Wednesday night. But the Holy Spirit brings conviction of sin. Making us aware of our transgressions. Pricking our hearts. Ever, ever, had, your hand, ever had your hand slapped by the Holy Spirit? Ever felt that? I, for me, sometimes it's that pop in the back of the head or that might be breath of it. <laughs> be careful which way that goes. But the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. And I'm going to tell you guys, this world needs some conviction of sin. There's people out there just doing anything and everything they want to do, and they don't care. They don't consider it. They're not thinking about the consequences. They're just going about doing whatever it takes to fulfill the lust of the flesh, to do whatever makes them happy. But speaking of us, it's going to make us aware of our transgressions. I, I don't want to have sin in my life. I want Jesus to make me aware if I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing. And like I said, that old term, pricking your heart. You ever, you ever feel that way like you just hurt Jesus' feelings? That's the Holy, that's the Holy Spirit bringing, convicting you of that. Um, convicting of, of righteousness. Leading us to live a life pleasing to God. Can I just be honest? Flesh does not have any desire to please God whatsoever. Flesh has the desire to do exactly what you want to do. It's only when you are led by the Spirit. That you want to live that life of righteousness. That you want to get up and do what you're supposed to do to live a life pleasing to God. That's knowing when to say yes and when to say no. When to do the things you know you should do and stop when you know you're doing things you shouldn't be doing. Amen. And the world's going to be hard on you on this stuff. But the Holy Spirit. Then he says he's going to convict us also of judgment. Making us aware of the judgment that each of us must face. But also reminding us that. Judgment of others does not belong to us. Amen. Thank you. I was going to have to amen myself, Ken, if you didn't do it. But we need that ever constant reminder. It's easy. It's easy to fall into that trap of judging other people. Yeah. What they look like, what they drive, what they smell like. What they're smoking, what they're eating, where they live. What their mugshot looked like when it showed up on the Facebook page. Yeah. Speaking the truth. I've talked to some people before. I said, yeah, I saw your mugshot. It didn't look too good. You know, like, <laughs> they don't like that. They don't like that. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 you know you, you, it was on Facebook. I couldn't help it. There you were, Union County Sheriff's Department. There's your mugshot. Yeah, what am I supposed to say? 
But you know, here's the thing. But am I supposed to judge somebody because of that? No, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit corrected me on that. It's like, don't be laughing at people with their mugshots on there. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. Amen. But here's another thing. The Holy Spirit, okay, the Holy Spirit is going to convict us. Conviction is a good thing, right? Amen. Conviction shows you what? We talked about this Wednesday night. That God still loves you. Conviction shows you that God still places great value on your life. That you are highly prized. You are highly prized to God. He paid a great price for you, and He's ready to redeem you and bring you into that everlasting life with Him. Amen. He doesn't want you to do anything on this earth that's going to mess it up. So if you're sitting around, you feel this hurt all the time, you might want to just say, "Okay, God, I'm finally going to give in." It's the Holy Spirit convicting me. Now I'm going to change, and I'm going to live my life for you. But it also says the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truths, and this is so important because let me see. Somebody help me out with this. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And the devil's been lying to some of y'all in here. And the devil's been lying to people who are joining us online. And the devil lies to this church and it lies all around. He's a liar. And the purpose of his lies are to lead you away from God and the multiple blessings that he has for you in your life. And you know the devil's pretty good at what he does. He's been practicing for a long time. And he's got pretty good. He, know, he knows your buttons. I wish I could get my button surgically removed. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being for real. It's like free will. I prayed for God. Take free will away from me. I don't want it. It doesn't work that way. Just like the devil knows where my button is. Y'all know last Sunday. Let me just hear this. Last Sunday I was talking about going to Walmart, shopping. They got one register open, and it's, it's, and it's that slowest person they've got. Y'all remember I was preaching about that? Where's my sister? Y'all know what I had to do Monday? I had to go grocery shopping for Santa. And I went to Walmart. <laughs> Sandra got $255 worth of groceries. That girl eats good. Sandra got $255 worth of groceries. I was by myself in a shopping cart filled up to here. And I looked and there was one register open. <laughs> and there were 37 people in that line with their arms crossed all looking like this. And I was like, all right. Brenda told me, she said, Daniel, you got to be careful when you say it because God's going to put you through it. So I had to go to a self-checkout with $255 worth of groceries. And this girl that worked there wears one of them pretty little yellow jack, yellow vests that they got. She kept walking around like, why is it taking this man so long? She walked by about the fourth time and all I just smiled because there was part of me said, you can't help. You know, that, <laughs> that's what the flesh wanted to say. But the whole time I'm sitting there thinking about, Lord, I just preached about this. And I was talking about how you got to have a smile on your face. And you better be in here being nice to these people. About the third time she came out, she was looking at me and I was like, I said, I got a lot of groceries here. <laughs> the devil's good at what he does. He knows where my button is. Does he know where your button is? Yes. Does he find it at least once or 37 times a week? <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. This is why we need the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is going to guide us into the truth. When the devil is coming and he's trying to sell you his lies, the Holy Spirit is going to lead us into truth. I did good that day. I got all the groceries. I didn't get mad. I even smiled at the camera up there. I waved at the camera up there. Yeah, I learned that trick from Ken. <laughs> See, that's, that, there's another whole preaching message right there. Those cameras on up there, you know, we think, oh, they're watching me at Walmart. Sometimes people, I guarantee you, there's people doing some more stuff than just waving and smiling on their cameras, too. But it's like, you know, God's always watching us and he wants to make sure we're doing the right thing. So he gives us the Holy Spirit to remind us of what we're doing and what we're supposed to be doing. If the Holy, like I said, the Holy Spirit will guide you into truth. The devil's a liar. I'm trying to get back on these notes so I can finish up. If you're left on your own without the Holy Spirit, you will fall for the lies and the deception of the devil. Amen. And you will receive it as truth. The Bible says that in these last days that even the very elect will be deceived. The devil's good at what he does. There's a lot of stuff going on in this world right now that's a lie and people want to buy into it. I'm not calling out specifics. There's almost lots of stuff going on. 
There are people being deceived daily. There's things going on all around us in this country, in this community, and throughout the world. But we need the Holy Spirit, the voice of truth, identifying the lies that the devil is pointing us to and sending us in the right direction. Amen. Amen. Because without the Holy Spirit in our life, we can't make it. The Holy Spirit cannot mislead you. He can't speak a lie because his words are the word of God. This is all in that little section of scripture I just read to you. His words are the word of God, and God cannot lie. The Bible says God says I'm not, God is not a man that he should lie. The Holy Spirit will also tell you of things to come, regardless of what's in the past. This is another big thing, church. We, we, need, about, we need about six months just worth of preaching about get out of your past and start working towards your future. Just a reality. You got to start forgiving people in your life. You just you got you got to start forgiving people. You got to start letting go of some of those hurts and receive the healing that Jesus has for you right now. The longer you're holding on to that stuff, the less you're walking into the things that God has, because the Holy Spirit is going to tell you the things to come. God has established for you a future. You have a future and a hope. Your future has been revealed through the Holy Spirit. Or will be revealed through the Holy Spirit. Because God uses the Holy Spirit to identify His will for your life. A lot of people are saying, I don't know God's will. Read your Bible, you'll know it. He will direct you in your daily walk and He'll identify potential harm. Mm. Let it out. <laughs> I'm serious. There's decisions that people make all the time. And you're like, man, this kind of looks like it's too good to be true. It is! <laughs> it is. It's a lie. It's the devil. And the Holy Spirit is in there trying to tell you, shaking you, it's too good to be true. It's, it's too good to be true. And you're sitting there on Facebook looking. She, she sure is pretty. I can't believe that girl sent me that friend request. <laughs> Can't I can't understand why it says uh, Abdul changed his profile picture. <laughs> I'm not the only one that gets those. <laughs> but it's like, oh, it just looks too good to be true. Let me send him, I mean her, a private message. Let me answer that private message. Oh, yes, they love me. Still trying to figure out why it says Abdul changed his profile picture. Just look too good to be true. Because it is. And the Holy Spirit's in there reminding you, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. It's a trap, it's a lie, it's a trick. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit again, will identify potential harm. It's going to lead you back to Jesus. He's going to put your eyes on the hills from whence comes your help and get your eyes out of the gutter where the devil wants to lead you. I'm going to change this whole preaching. I don't even know I'm trying to use my notes anymore. But the Holy Spirit says he will glorify Jesus. And all that's done through our lives. God will use the Holy Spirit to bring glory to God through us and through our lives. In everything that we do. We're the vessels of the Holy Spirit. That's who we are. And right, Sean. We're the vessels of the Holy Spirit. This isn't my body. This doesn't belong to me. This is a vessel of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be doing things to disgrace God with this vessel that's designed to hold the, the greatest power in the world. We're vessels of the Holy Spirit that bring glory to God through our righteous living. But then he says, I will, he said, the Holy Spirit will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Y'all remember when Jesus was being tempted and the, and the devil took him up on the pinnacle. He said, all this can be yours. If you'll just bow down and worship me, I'll give you all of this. And, you know, I've got my own little adaptation of that. And Jesus just looked at the devil. He said, it's already mine. It's already mine. But God will give to us these things that Jesus has for us because we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Romans 11, 36. And I didn't put this scripture down. Romans eleven thirty six 36 says, for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Everything in this world belongs to God. And God said, I will give you, I'll give it all to you. If you're just living your life right for me. The same power that Jesus received is the same power that we will receive. I'm trying to finish up here. Acts chapter 1 verses 4, 5 through 8. I'm going to give you just enough of this to prepare you. Next week's Mother's Day, right? We're going to have a Mother's Day celebration in here next week. And we got three more weeks. We're going to be preaching about the power of the Holy Spirit and today's church and what the church is supposed to do. 
Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. And being assembled together with them, this is Jesus' some of his last words, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse, verse 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is the purpose of the church and God's plan for the church is to be a powerful church, empowered with the Holy Spirit. We're called to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. We're his examples to the world. Amen. I don't think he wants us to be examples of weakness, but of strength, of power. We're his representatives to the lost of this world, empowered to show them a better way, the way, the truth, and the life. And that's in Jesus Christ. But Jesus said, hey, look, guys, I'm, I'm going on to the Father. I want you to go to Jerusalem, and I want you to wait. I don't want you to go out and start trying to do ministry yet. I don't want you to go out trying to witness to people. I don't want you to go out laying hands on people in the streets. I don't want you to go out into the prisons and start sharing the gospel message. I want you to wait until you receive the promise of the Father, which is the infilling power of the Holy Spirit. And he said, then when that happens, then you'll be able to go out into the world, and you'll be effective. You'll be effective. You'll be powerful. You'll be witnesses for me in all that you do. And guys, I don't know about y'all, but I look at the world around us today, and it's a mess. I, I look at what's taking place, like I said, all around us, in our, in our part of the world, in other parts of the world. There, there are people suffering unnecessarily. Evil is just spreading throughout this world like wildfire. And it's time for the church to rise up and do something about it. It's time for the church to be powerful. I've, I've, I've seen glimpses. I've, I've seen glimpses. I see, I see the church get excited. I see a few people get excited and they want to they do as much as they can for God. And I want to tell you something. If we've got the power of the Holy Spirit behind us, we're not going to get burnt out. If we've got the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to have the wisdom to do the things that we're supposed to do. And in the order that God wants us to do it in. So we're going to be praying, guys, for that transformation in the church. Anybody else ready to see the church more powerful than it is today? Amen. I mean, I, I, I've got that. On. I'm ready to hit the streets and just go preaching. I'm ready to. I'm ready to go into the highways and the hedges, and however I can do that. But I can only do that if I've got the power of the Holy Spirit leading me into all truth. Protecting me from the lies of the devil. Convicting me of, of sin. Convicting me to live that righteous life. So I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for the church. I want to pray for the church as a whole. But I want to pray for you individually. If there's anybody here today, if I can pray for you. You got needs in your life. I know we had some people down at the altar earlier. I can't, pray, I can't play guitar and jump down here and pray at the same time. Our altars are open all the time. Power of the Holy Spirit. It's the anointing that breaks the yokes. There's people that I'm praying for right now that are struggling with addiction, and I'm, I'm trying to explain to them it's the power of God through the Holy Spirit what's going to break that, that addiction. Amen. Amen. There, there are people I know that are trying to, break, trying to break the stronghold of poverty. So as soon as you start embracing the Holy Spirit in your life, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will declare to you all the things that are mine. Amen. I don't think God wants a, a broke down, trodden church, but he wants an empowered, prosperous church. Amen. Amen. Is there anybody here that needs prayer today? More power in your life. More of God in your life. Living that life of righteousness. I want, I want to pray for that for somebody today. I want to pray for the Holy Spirit to just convict you to live that life pleasing to God. Amen. We still have that one little instrumental song on there. If you could pull that up. I don't know if it's on there or not. If not, we're good. I'm going to step down here and pray. Hard part's over. Some people have already come down for prayer. So anybody else that needs prayer, come down let's pray for you today.
stand together. We'll be dismissed in prayer. Uh, anybody, again, that's planning on riding down to the restaurant today, just everybody just meet outside. We're going to some cars and some of motorcycles. And anybody needs directions or anything, let's just talk about that here in just a few minutes. But God bless you guys. Don't, don't get satisfied. Don't just get easily satisfied with where you are, your place in life, what God's doing in your life. But let's just let's keep pressing on until we receive everything that God has for us. Amen. Amen. And be the church that he has planned for us to be. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we bless you again. Thank you and give you glory. God, we thank you for who you've designed us to be. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that you have given us, God, to succeed in all these areas of our life. Lord, we pray right now as we're getting ready to move forward from today's service. As we ride out on motorcycles, we ride out in cars, God, that you protect us and keep us encouraged, Lord. Keep us together in one mind and one accord, Lord. I just pray, God, this week that each person here will just feel that, that purpose that you have for them in their life, God. And let them embrace the power of the Holy Spirit in their life to become all that you designed us to be. And we'll give you glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen.